there's this idea of this aggregate of individuals that makes up a culture or an economy or a movement or whatever. So we tend to focus on the individuals and direct our attentions laterally, and we kind of miss the systems. I'm going to move through some systems today. I just I want to start simple. So I thought I'd just start with a with flower that I'm thinking of today. Because I'm thinking this morning, it's my home's like three and a half thousand kilometers to the north because I'm down in Melbourne on the opposite end of the continent here in Australia. But I know this season, I know this time, and I know that on the other end of the continent right now, back at home, I, I'll probably be able to see this this flower. It's like a little hibiscus. It just pops up on a tiny stalk in the grass around the place. You don't see it for the rest of the year. It's just for like a month or so around this time of year. And it's called Yiki. And I don't know if it even has an English name, but it's this very beautiful, very bright white flower that just kind of glows. Now, there's signals that come with that white flower. So I see that white flower and I know that it's an indicator that it's time to it's time to catch the white fish in the river. The white fish at that time are really, really fat. And their fat only in that season is medicinal. So it's good medicine as well for a number of ailments, but then also as a preventative medicine. And when you eat it with the other foods that are available in that season, seasonally, then all those nutrients and medicinal qualities become bioavailable. So I guess as we progress in this season now, it, it won't be long, like in a, you know, over the next month, because I see that when I see that white flower and I can imagine that now happening. And I know that those white fish are fat and medicinal. I go to the river to get them. Where? How will I know when I get to the river where I'm going to find those fish? Well, I'll be directed there by the white birds. So I see flocks of white birds diving in a part of the river. I know that's where the white fish are. So I got to get myself a boat and <laughs> head out to there and throw my line in there or spear those fish there. So that's where you go. You're directed to these places. And as we move, you know, into the next season, those first bushfires will happen. As those runs complete and off those white fish, and we move into a catfish, looking for catfish, then I'll have to stop on that island over there. And but that's mosquitoes will be there, so I got to burn the grass, and the grass will be dying off from the cold, from that dry season, and so I got to burn that grass off to make smoke to get rid of the mosquitoes. But it's also the right time to burn that grass because all of the seeds from the you know, peanut tree and wattle tree and everything else that's on that island, on the sandy ridges there, those seeds can't germinate unless they have that smoke, <laughs> that exactly right smoke and that heat from the fire of that grass. That's what makes those seeds activate and germinate. That whole cycle's important and it's the way i live my life because i need to get rid of those mosquitoes can you see i'm part of that system and there's a complex web of signals happening so what's important here is especially if you're looking at finances you're thinking about you're thinking about this this big tangled web of signals so that flower is giving a signal and there are cause and effect relations here because that that color of that flower, it, it does something in the world. That signal isn't just a, it's not just an indicator. It's not just an effect of the season either. It's, it's a cause because that triggers other things to happen. Certain animals, when they see that color, they come there. And then the scent that they leave, that brings other things. And then they have to interact in certain ways that direct the game trails upwind, downwind, upriver, downriver all over the place in really complex ways. There are signals happening all the time, really complex things going on. If you disrupt one of those signals, then you know it can throw out the entire system and the season can be late. There's certain trees that won't flower. Mm -hmm. Like we noticed later in the season, you, know, you get the red flowers on that milkwood tree and that's when the oysters get fat. If those red flowers don't come, the oysters they're no good and you can't eat them <laughs> Dude, so uh, sorry sorry to interrupt but it, it's this it is a sorry, question here the, <clears throat> you were describing right now complex systems of 
a bioregion, let's say, a place yeah. where you where you live. Well, it's biocultural because the humans are part of it. Okay. And so our okay. culture, our culture, ceremony, daily activities, these are giving signals too. And and now yeah. now we're we're globally active species and globally connected. Mm. Do you well, see that's where the that's where the noise comes in? Do you see well okay, go 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 what I wanted to ask Sorry, you, no. Do you see yeah, do you see that. similar similar patterns? Um or do you see are there similar patterns emerging on a global scale that could give these kinds of signals and and allow us to balance global ecosystems or both cultural and and natural? Or what, what how's, how's your how's your how's your what standards? we see now is 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 false signals. So like so my new book comes out in October and it's called uh, Right Story, Wrong Story. And it's going into this a bit. So there's signals and then there's noise. And we understand, I don't need to go into it, but we understand we're in like a post-truth, post-fact kind of world right now. Now in the financial layer, there, there there's a lot of illusion there. There's a lot of illusory si signals happening from various Ponzi schemes, various pump and dump schemes. And of course, just what you need in order to try and create this illusion of predictability and generalizability in an economic system so that you're able to work out the probabilities for the insurances that you can speculate on and speculate on in a futures market, et cetera. You need, you need to have these things. There needs to be a certain amount of predictability based on calculations of signals that are coming from the real world. But a lot of these are illusory. And a lot of these are illusions. So there is this kind of net that's spread out across the world. And I'm not claiming to be separate from that because that all started when my family speared the Dutch 500 years ago when they landed <laughs> on the beach. And they, let's just say they didn't ask a lady to dance first. And they kind of, that was against the law. So we speared them. And then they, they went to, they, they limped back with a skeleton crew because we killed most of them. They limped back to Holland and there was a loss for the journey. And debtors prison wasn't a very nice thing back in those days. And a lot of people underwriting that journey and expecting profits from it. So, you know, out of that financial disaster came the world's first corporation, a Dutch East India company. So you could have this straw man there something that would be able to absorb so you've got this illusion of a being in the world and in our way and which i mean human ways all over the planet before that every culture even imperial ones that was known as black magic that's known as sorcery <laughs> this idea of creating illusions that have an impact in the world that's what sorcery is and so this was a kind of sorcery if you put that lens over it of 500 years ago they created that then there's the british east india company and then out of holland because they killed all the heathen or moved them in <laughs> off off the heather anyway they've managed they've managed to like spawn this this just menagerie of 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 financial instruments that were all quite sorcerous like a sorcerous arsenal of of financial instruments that are all based on this noise rather than true signal coming from anything that's real. You know, it, it measures signals of what's real, but then manipulates these things into, into a, a lot of noise. And there's right story coming from the reality, and then there's wrong story. This, that's how we describe it in Aboriginal English in Australia, right story, wrong story. There's wrong story, which is something that is not based on communication with the land and these these huge interconnected systems of signals in the landscape and in reality there are there's a story that's invented independently from that just in the cloud just in a shadow world it's bullshit and these bullshit. things are just yeah there's bullshit that's invented and then made real in terms of its impact on the world so that sorcery, once again, an illusion that actually has a real life impact, but it's come from nothing. And it's been a unilateral thing that's in somebody's interest. Like like but Elon's Sebastian, tweets so... used to be before he owned Twitter. And he yeah. wanted to like pump it, pump and dump Bitcoin or something. He, he just, he, he had the, that big black magic that he could do. Of, and you now, know, now he has people looking over him, over him.
over his shoulder before he tweets. He cannot tweet whatever he likes, right? So yeah, that's it. The, Sebastian, you have raised your hand. Where yeah, so, so where would you like to take it? Yes, some, something came to my mind when you elaborated on this indigenous connectiveness and embeddedness with nature. Yeah, so and and we all know we have separated, especially in the the higher developed our culture got. Yeah, and yes, we have to discuss mm. if this is really higher. Yeah, in development than indigenous cultures, especially when we start getting decoupled yeah, from this nature. Mm. And what I'm asking myself here is, there is, we as in, the, the more we develop, we strive for efficiency. yeah. And this efficiency mm -hmm. kills the literacy when it comes to this embeddedness with nature. Because we think we can do it better. We can do it more efficient. And this is the core because everything in our economy is about efficiency gains and productivity gains and all the technology that mm. we develop and all the energies <clears throat> that we source is all towards gaining more efficiencies, getting more bang for the buck, so to say. And that creates a hell lot of illiteracy yeah, when it comes to the understanding and the embeddedness and the entanglement with the natural ecosystems that we all depend on. And yes. the the other, so that's a remark or an hypothesis. And the question is really, can we sh shift that? Or is there any example how to shift that? Yeah, because if we don't shift that, we are lost, right? Because that then we stay disconnected and we keep on extracting and degenerating, et cetera. And the, the solution, so at least from a mental model, is the, the question of reciprocity. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that we get into it and always ask how we can give more than we take. Because then we, we get a part of the regeneration as well. Yeah, because then we are not extracting more due to we need to be more efficient and we need to find some arbitrages, utilizing some some natural resources better than someone else or being better in externalizing the cost than someone else because this is the fight we are into with our competitors. Yeah, and then this is really a race mm. to the bottom, right? And the question is really, so how we can and enable this regenerative capacity not only in nature but from a mental model within us because if we are not enabling it mm. within us yeah becoming stewards of the natural systems and becoming part of it like you described it that that role played humans right when you when you say okay we made those fires and it has had a meaning for the ecosystem, yeah, and it triggered some development for the ecosystem. So we were, or we are called keystone species, right? And but we really mm. lost that due to the fact that we we are running for in this rat race for efficiency gains to make a financial gain, yeah, and and creating a hell lot of loss, yeah. And this is also mm. something mm. I learned to just. I think it was the week before. I... We are cr we are creating wealth that is destroying mm. wealth, and it's really fundamentally. Yeah. It's okay. That, and that's a different thing. Yeah. That's a different thing. So that passive money or money return thing. But what you're talking about, I mean, efficiency. If you think about it, efficiency in terms of energy, in terms of costs, labor, everything else. That's a fair enough goal. But it's another one of those illusions because it's not what's actually happening. Things are clunky. The supply chains are clunky and they're deliberately clunky and complicated because, and it, it costs a hell of a lot more than it should to produce every unit. But that's good because every dollar gets spent over and over and over in the same supply chain, which is all owned by the same fella. So every time that same dollar gets spent, he's not losing money, he's getting more. He's got some velocity happening in there that's incredible. So that's this illusion that just makes zeros come on your screen faster than you can think. Finance is a whole different thing. What private equity is doing in the world is a very freaking different thing from maximizing any kind of efficiency or anything like this. These are the things that us hacks 
are told. These are the things that us useful idiots are told. These are the things that we spend our life striving towards. All this efficiency, they don't really care about that. You're still going to get laid off at the end of the day when it's time to decimate the ranks or completely sell something on that's going very well and sustainably just because that's not how private equity works. But you've got to, to just the ravages of, of the marketplace since people like Jack Welch back in the day just sort of broke the entire thing. And they really did break it <laughs> and started this, this insane series of black magics way beyond anything that the Dutch East India Company or the plenty of tulip speculators or any of the others, bubbles beyond, bubbles within bubbles. They couldn't have even imagined the insane complexities of this. What's going on with the asset management funds and all the rest? We're talking about, it comes back to power again now. And in our relations together, like I was saying before, if, if you're with someone who's better than you in my culture, then they have authority, but they have no power over you. And that, that's the core, that's the center of, of a, no, a non-competitive or anti-competitive system. Nature isn't red in tooth and claw. It's, everybody understands this now, every scientist, except for some evolutionary psychologists who are still holding on to <laughs> the whole idea of dog-eat-dog -dog and alpha males and things like that, because you get more clicks on YouTube that way. Yeah, it's nature, nature is not competitive. Nature is, is interdependent and everything is linked in with everything else. Things are shared. Trees share nutrients with other plants. We know this now in science and the academy, not just in the stories from blackfellas running around at loincloths anymore. It's like, no, we have academics who can verify these things now. There is a strange kind of sentience that goes on. There is a signal that comes from land and it's big. And you might think you're sitting there like, oh, I'm in a building in the middle of a city or something. And you might think instead of thinking of land in terms of having to be a wild space or a wilderness space that you got to pay to visit. Well, you might think of it in terms of creation because we do. Everything in creation is dreaming. Everything in creation has a dreaming. Everything has story. Everything's interconnected. So really a way of reconnecting with, with receiving that signal from the land, with communication with the land and creation, which is not a spiritual thing. It's a very practical and biological thing. As a biological entity, you are swimming in the informatics of a system. Now that's a real world system. And all you have to do is ground yourself enough in the animal that you are to be able to distinguish between the signal and the noise to distinguish between the real flows and the black magics, the sorcery <laughs> of illusion. And when you're in those, those Ponzi schemes, and when you're under them, because all the power in the world right now, which power over is just not something that exists in creation. That's another illusion. All that power, if you are within a hierarchy and people have power over you, then that's because everyone in your system is going along with that illusion. It's, it's possible to start to hear the signal, to perceive the signal, to share that with others. In fact, you need others to do it because I can't walk alone on country, in, my, in the bush, in my, in my land. I can't walk alone there. And I can receive the signal, sure, but I can't analyze it. I can't do any decent analytics about the seasonal factors that are happening around me on my own. I need... I need people with me for that. We all need to be, because everybody's, everybody's getting different data sets. And then we have to sit around the fire and we all have to share our different viewpoints and story on that in order to make any sense of it. There's a collective thing going on there. So you do need other people for that as well. Tomas. Yes. What does white magic look like in this context? And how do we sit around <laughs> the, the, the bonfire on a global scale? Ask Tucker Carlson. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a lot of time on his hands he could tell you about white magic hey <laughs> anybody who doesn't that. know who Tucker Carlson yeah. is is not going to get that ah he's like the white supremacist Fox he was the, the the big star of Fox News 
Anyway, he got sacked. Ah, yeah, yeah, he got sacked. Anyway. Yeah, right, right, right. I heard that, but yeah, I, don't, yeah. I, don't know, I don't know how that connects with my white magic. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. See, from it's funny because from from one point of view, sorcery is called black magic. And from another point of view, you might call it magic. Hey, anyway, yeah, what does sorcery look like? Okay, so what does the other thing look like? It's quite, It look, it just comes comes back to that idea of that if you think the difference between signal and noise, the difference between real data, real informatics, and good story to make sense of that, that is multilateral, not unilateral. So it's good, good story in that way. That's your, that's your, that's your signal and the things that you do with it in this kind of ceremony together. The, the, the bad magic is the illusion stuff where, where reality is being manipulated by people making things up which is kind of, it's it, there's, there's a freaking ep epidemic of that in the world right now. It's it's really disturbing. That, that's why I like I ditched everything and spent the last couple of years putting all that in the next book. We need to like really dig deep and find that anatomy, the anatomy of, of those things and the difference between right story and wrong story. Because you've got to be in right story. And you can't be in that alone. So, so, so if you, yeah. if you can't be in that, I've, alone, I've got some, you need I've the got, other, after you ask this next one, one can you read, yeah. can you redirect me to this bookmark? Because from there, it, it makes sense to move into perverse incentives and to different interventions within the financial system, et cetera, that are, that, that are going on in the world. All right. Just, just bookmark that and redirect me back to it. If I don't remember. Okay. But then, all right. So go with that. Yeah. Oh. What, what you're going to ask me now. Well, the, the, the question of, which is totally related to what you just said, the, the way we figure out good story is by connecting with each other, sitting around the bonfire and sharing story and weaving that story. Mm. And that works if we can actually sit around the bonfire, but it's becoming increasingly hard to do that even in a virtual space, because how do I know you're not some machine impersonating Tyson Yonka Porta, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because all I have is a, is a screen and a voice and any, any computer could do that <laughs> almost today. So, so how do we sit around a bonfire on a global scale and have these types of conversations to arrive at good story and agree on good story and see how we can then strengthen the, 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 the good magic. Mm. That's um, and 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 you could tie that easily to the to the to the bookmark to the perverse incentive yeah. landscape. That's the antidote. Oh, I, I mean, how do you? I mean, there's there's all, all, all that other layer of of illusion. Just to, and we haven't even really touched that, but the tech kind of enables it. And of course, Absolutely. because the people who are tinkering these these digital systems, they coming out of that com competitive economy. They're coming from that desire for power, which is not like it's not bad people doing it. It's just people who have to exist in a system and are looking for some kind of safety and security for their family. Yeah, the, the tech does enable that. I don't know. Or, or will. I did try to, I don't know. I was feeling lazy the other day. I didn't want to write something. So I tried to get ChatGPT to do it in my my, my voice, like <laughs> going through all my writing. And then, I don't know, write me something about this. Somebody wants like a page from me <laughs> and I wrote it and it was just like, oh no, that people will be able to tell that's, <laughs> that's not me at all. Yeah. I don't know that it, there's, I mean, you can tell when something's coming from relatedness and from good relation, you, you can tell there's, there's not a lot of self-assuredness that goes on with that kind of, that kind of speech and, and it, it and it is very, it's very complex and it's very this, however, that, and it's, it, it's never just based in dichotomies, etc. Yeah. It's, it's far more complex always. I don't know. So, I mean, you look at, so we might say from that story I was telling you before about the flower and that bushfire time, when you see, whenever you see bushfire smoke, and this is when people are burning, burning the grass in the lands, the same as people have done in their heather in Europe forever and in most landscapes on earth. And when you see that smoke, 
like that's a that's a signal as well like that's a signal that the next night will be a cold one it'll be a cold evening the next evening how do, so i don't know and some people will say it like there's causation like it's the smoke that makes the cold evening happen and it's kind of like well that's not really true but at the same time it kind of is because that smoke is giving a lot of signals. That smoke's only happening at that time because of a whole heap of other interrelated signals that's letting people know that that's the time to light the fire or that's letting the sparrow hawk know that that's their season for chasing the rats and lizards out of the dead grass. So the sparrow hawk picks up a burning branch out of your campfire and drops it in the grass and spreads the fire that way. And we manage the land following that story as well with that sparrow hawk. We do that burn off in the same patterns and same places. So when it's all integrated in that way, and when there's ceremony collective to make sense of it, it becomes something else. But you can see causation there. Ah, the smoke does cause the cold evening indirectly through a butterfly effect of a lot of different things it brings certain insects to certain places it causes others to move it brings other species to certain places it takes these ones out it, it affects the the air flows all the different scent the movement of the ants and everything in that system it's just all interconnected and can actually affect the temperature like locally it can affect your your weather and if you think about that on a global scale, then you're thinking about climate. And so what are the tinkerings that you can do realistically? This brings us to some interesting illusions. You see, financially, there are a lot of mechanisms to create like extinction offsets <laughs> in our world. There's, I, I think, I, I don't know if anybody has been following the biodiversity offsets and how horrendously that failed. Because, <laughs> I mean, even so, your carbon offsets scheme that seems to be, that seems to be like a, a good thing that you can you can get good informatics, good data to inform stuff that will become reliable, predictable. Like you can go, ah, oh, well, there's this many tons of carbon sequestered you know what i mean and that's measurable so therefore it's fairly reliably measurable and we've got the systems in place for that so then then we can break that into units and those units can then have value and as demand increases or decreases and supply increases and decreases then we can tinker with those fluctuations we can pump and dump as needed we can speculate on what that's going to be by a certain date and then we can use that we can gamble on that in this financial system they tried to do the same thing with biodiversity but the metrics were a bit more difficult because biodiversity you're looking at something a lot more difficult to measure you're going to have to have a lot of different a lot of different inputs and it's it's it, it can be fairly unpredictable as well so that that kind of that kind of fell apart and it ended up being a lot of uh, there was a lot of illusion in there it, and, and i'll say illusion instead of fraud because it's a nicer word but there was that kind of illusion that was really that f word going on where biodiversity was actually decreasing and people were showing increases and in the way it was measured there was lots of things that went wrong with that these are because of perverse incentives and there are a lot of people right now trying to figure out ways to make nature pay ways to do like with the carbon credits and have measurable some measurable factor that can be broken up into units that can be have certain set values that can change and fluctuate in ways that are reasonably predictable by the powerful yeah the, but everybody's looking for that holy grail at the moment how do we make natural systems pay how do we make bioregions pay for themselves how do we make them worth something financially? Now, really, in finance, you can create an illusion around anything that you can have metrics for, and you should be able to gamble on that into infinity. I'm going to freaking do it with bit Bitcoin. You can do it with crypto. You can do it with pretty much anything, whether you go with proof of work or proof of stake or whatever. These things are These things are illusory, although they do have real effects in the world. Now, it's about these perverse incentives. 
So let me let me throw out a couple of a couple of problematic ones for you. So we do have a group here that's that's trying to do stuff with biodiversity and and carbon credits, and they're doing it with indigenous land management practices. So you can invest in a certain chunk of a certain land management practice, and then okay, so what's the measurement of the effect? And you know what I mean? Who certifies and who verifies? that that work has been done and has achieved this measurable amount of benefit. Well, of course, they the elders sign off on that. So the elders in that community say whether or not that's happened. Now, politically, culturally, and in every way, that's something that makes you want to punch the air and say, yeah, that's awesome. But for me, from a complexity viewpoint, even with all the respect for elders that I have, all I can see down the track there is a perverse incentive system that's going to erode the integrity of elders and elder knowledge and also is going to result in a bunch of illusions and and more fraud down the track. Because if you're tying a reward to somebody for signing off on something that's happened, then the incentive that you're providing is disincentivizing them saying, no, that didn't happen. If those elders are getting royalties, <laughs> can you see what I mean? In exchange for signing off on something, then they have an incentive to approve something and say something that's happened that actually hasn't. So so right away, I can see a problem with that. I, I can see a problem with, like, you can also, there's a lot of really interesting soundscape technology that can collect over long periods of time, can collect terabytes of data in these devices, these little audio devices you can just plant throughout a landscape like like a little audio internet of things there. And just from the soundscape that you're picking up, you can accurately measure the biodiversity in that place, which is pretty amazing, hey? Like, so you can measure and track fluctuations in the biodiversity, which are seasonal as well, because in some places, in most places, there are times of year when there's not much going on in terms of biodiversity, because everything moves around, migrates seasonally. So they can record those sorts of things. Where I started to see problems, and they need to put something in place before they deploy this, and before they start using this, before it hits Wall Street (laughs) in any way, they've got to make sure that they can't reverse that. Because it also has the capacity of soundscape technology to put sound into the system. They were talking about this. They're able to replicate or play back biodiversity sounds in that landscape. And that puts a signal, like a sorcerous signal out into the landscape that actually attracts flora and fauna to that place. So can you believe that? They've, They've... measurably been able to demonstrate this, that if they play the sounds of biodiversity in a place, the biodiversity actually increases because people hear those signals. They're mating signals. They're the signals of things that are your lunch. They're all these different things. So they can temporarily create this illusory biodiversity in a place, which is really just things passing through. So I don't know, you're all smart people. Can you see the potential perverse incentives of that system? popping through so what how how great would be the temptation to manipulate an ecosystem in order to show something better on your balance sheet all i could see is that your whole system in that bioregion would stop following seasonal cycles and would start following the cycles of quarterly reports (laughs) you know what i mean you'd actually change the seasonality because these things would have to be manipulated to the certain dates four times a year when the biodiversity is measured so that that act of observing from outside it's it's weirdly it's having that observer effect your uncertainty heisenberg way is really really happening in real time so anyway perverse incentives there, there are in all of these things you have perverse incentives so any financial mechanisms that you're trying to create that are about creating artificial value out of nature, out of mm, increase in nature, that can also correlate with growth financially, anything like that, you've got to have, you've got to have data that, that, that you've got to have polyangular verification systems. 
You've got to have data sets that are coming from multiple sources that are checkable from multiple different sets of people. In the Mint, they used to have people like any job that could be done by one person in the Mint, just pulling a lever or whatever. They'd always have three people doing it. Back when we used to have real money that you could hold in your hand, <laughs> do you remember that? They had these things called Mints where they print the money and mint the coins. Anyway, if you are there on a shift and it only needs one person to pull the lever or press the button or whatever, they'd always have three people there doing the job. Because if you got two people, two people doing it, you can easily get a conspiracy happening. But if you got three people, they found it was really hard. That kind of, I don't know, that throws like too many variables into the prisoner's dilemma right there. If you got three people. Yeah.